the spring, but they're all working for the same food source or relatively the same, so that they come out in stages and it, it helps with their survival. But that's not what I'm talking about. Here's <laughs> talking about center four. Um, and that's all about where have all the insects gone. And this is a pretty fun um, center. Um, to start it out with, um, if they've been through center three, they're going to know a bunch of stuff. But um, there's a great book that comes with this center. Um, where where do they go? When, where where do they go? Insects in winter. And um, there's a poem at the beginning that I won't read it to you. Um, it talks about that you know they're, what happens is they're flying around in the summer and then winter comes and where do they go? And then throughout this book, and I've indexed it on here. There's if you just go through and read like the first two sentences of each of each section on the different bug, it'll tell the kids where it goes. And you can choose to do that um, before you do one of the activities, or you might have the kids discuss where where you think bugs go um, before you start the activity. Um, but then after that, get out.
So in, in the pull it back together, you might just talk about how the different habitats help insects to survive. And then at the end of that book, there's another poem that tells you, um, that says, on a warm day in spring, that's the end of the book. Are there any questions? Well, the um, the bark beetle, obviously, obviously yeah, hurting lots of trees. Yeah, so, but the, it's not the beetle. It's, it's not the beetle. The beetle is the carrier of the blue stained fungus. Two little holes in the top of its head, and it bores in to an effective tree. The fungus goes into those little pits, goes into another tree, and the fungus infects the tree. So the beetle is the carrier. It's not the vector. Yeah. So all that I only speak for the beetle. Oh. <laughs> so all that boring it does, the tree could survive without that fungus? It does when the fungus is not present. The fungus appears when there's stress in the forest, which can be caused by you know, overgrowth, drought, uh, extreme high temperatures, even if you don't have enough water. Um, the, the key thing in Colorado and in most places in the West is the lack of fire to reduce the overcrowding in the forest. Oh. Yeah. But the, in terms of the galls, it's, it's, it's rare. There are a few individual species that do cause, I don't, I'm not aware of anything that cause actually death, but, but we'll, we'll thin a stand of willows or whatever. But typically, they're, they're not considered a stand. Yeah, all the literature that I read said that really you're not supposed to try to control them or anything. They're just, you know, they just happen. They don't hurt the plant, they just might alter do you, are you guys familiar with the maples, the, the native maples, Rocky Mountain maples, and the little teenies that they can use? No. If you go, if you walk along a stream in the foothills and they see the small maples, they're not very tall here in Colorado, the natives are, they get a red, red velvet surface on them. That red velvet is a gall. It's caused by a mite, and without it, you would the scarlet red of that particular tree. So wow. It doesn't hurt it, it actually adds what we would think of as a shooting. Yeah. 